All right, so let's dive in here today. And I have the wrong slide up already. This is starting off great. All right, so today, here's what we're covering. The power of raw file formats. And I'm going to get into what those file formats are that I want to talk about because there are some that we're going to... There's some that we're going to focus on more than others, and I'm going to use one specific file format as an example here. And knowing that after I have that example set, it does carry over to a lot of other formats as well. Okay, so I'm going to stick with one particular today, but just know we're going to be covering a lot of different, pardon me, a lot of different um, uh, backgrounds here as well. So before we dive in, I do want to point out a lot of what I'm talking about today is very similar to what I'm covering in a new video course that I'm working on called Working Without Apps, which you can find at learn.joebulig.com. And I will do a little bit of an explanation and small pitch of some sort uh, about that at the end. Just want to make you completely aware of that. This being a free webinar, you know, that stuff tends to come along for the ride. Uh, so I will be talking a little bit more about that uh, at the end of this webinar here in about 30 minutes or so. So just be aware of that. That's part of what we're talking about today is very similar to what's going into that video course at the same time. Mondays at 1 p.m. Central, I do live streams as many weeks as I possibly can at joebulig.live. Uh, that's just a redirect that takes you over to Twitch just to make it a little bit easier for us to remember on how to get there. But one of the things that I am working towards and learning uh, that I want to do as part of that, and I've started working on the one for this next Monday, is just looking at the, the content that we're going to cover today and then exploring individual apps and services and seeing how well they fit within the framework that we're going to go through today. So in today's webinar, we're going to talk about what is this portability side, this anti-proprietary aspect of raw file formats, and what are the apps and services that support that? Okay, so that's Mondays at 1 p.m. Central. Uh, if that's of any interest to you, that is obviously free. It's open to the world, and there is no requirement on your part financially in any form whatsoever to, to dive into that. All right. Now, that said, there's one question I need to ask you as we dive into today. Do you use plain text files? Type this into the chat. Let me know if you use these. Because plain text files is the example that I want to start with today. And it's what I want to use as a foundation for our conversation. Carol, no, not yet. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> so plain text files are the basis of what I want to cover. And we're going to talk about the different benefits of using plain text files. Um, but I also want to point out that there are a lot of other file formats that can follow this same conversation. And just as an example here, um, let me get to this. So obviously .txt files, and there are some renditions of that, .md and .markdown. Obviously, you know, some of you have mentioned Markdown already. Markdown is a huge thing for, for me. I use it all the time. You know, it's, it's a, a thing that I am, what should I say? I am finding more and more ways to use it day to day. I even have it as my main method of writing emails. It's my main method of taking notes and building outlines. I'm using an outline uh, today to work through. So building markdown files uh, to me is very similar to text files. All it really does is when you use those .md or .markdown file extensions is tell it tells your text processor to do the formatting. That's really all it ever does. Now, not all file, uh, not all text editors will will do that, but a lot of them, a lot, a lot, a lot of them will. So there are some others that are going to follow this, JPEGs and ping files. 
I use these very heavily, and I have found that they are awesome as far as longevity goes, which is part of what we're going to talk about. Um, but a couple others here that we don't always think about. PDFs have been around forever. Everybody's got a reader for them. Like It's, it's very, very common, so we see these all the time. Uh, XML at the very end there, you know, a lot of people have heard of those. Again, I'm not going to go into the details of these individually. We're going to focus on text files today. But XML files, PDF files, tons and tons of software reads these. Uh, and they're very, very easy to share with other people. OPML files, uh, not everyone has heard of those. That's an outlining file format. And it's one that I have seen as an export for like RSS readers. I know there are a handful of RSS readers that will export and import OPML, which is super slick. So it is a nice, it's kind of a transferring format of sorts. If you know MindNode, you can export OPML from MindNode. You can do the same thing with Omni Outliner. It's a great portable uh, file format there for sure. Now, again, there are a lot of different aspects of these that uh, we could cover, but I, I do want to walk through a handful of these benefits because I think there, there's a lot of potential here. Um, and there are a lot of different directions we could take this. There are a lot of yes and no's that we could offer here, but I know that <laughs> it can get to be a very long conversation and that is not my intent. So let's focus on a few, um, a few of these. Uh, one of these is portability. And I, I do have a quick question here because this is, this is kind of important to this conversation. Um, are you cross-platform? Let me get me off of here. Are you cross-platform? Type this into the chat. I'd love to know if you are, if you're someone who is regularly switching from Mac to PC, or you know, like in my case, I have a tendency to go to Linux fairly regularly. So that is something that I tend to do. <laughs> so portability is something that I think is super important. I would say iOS and Mac OS does count. And it's simply because there are a lot of differences between those. We're even going to get into a little bit of specific apps that uh, that fit for this. And I know that there's a lot of potential problems that come with just saying, this works on both. So I, I don't know that it's going to necessarily be something that's so close that it's just one thing. So I would say those are cross platform. So I am seeing quite a, you know, most of us have at least a mobile device and a, and a laptop of some sort. So there's quite a bit of back and forth um, for those. David Parker, it looks like you're on the wrong chat system there. That's, that was one of my questions. Like if we have the question thing below and we got the chat on the side, does it get confusing? So just a, just a heads up there. So yes, portability. If you have text files or you have any of these raw file formats, this is something that's just flat beautiful in that you can move from system to system very, very easily. I have been using just plain text files and markdown files for a handful of years now and have moved from Linux machines to Mac machines to PCs and back and forth and all of up and down, all around. And it's never a problem. It's, it's not an issue whatsoever. So I love, 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 love the portability of, of these systems. So it, it's super, super slick because of that. Now, another one here. It's easy to use. Now, this is absolutely no surprise whatsoever in that by the using these formats, by using these different raw file formats, they're simple. Like, you're not going to do all the fancy stuff with them. You're not going to have all the fancy editing and the formatting and stuff on it. So it's not something that you're going to struggle with just because it is just flat easy. Um, another one here. It's lightweight. 
maybe I should leave this up because I'm going to go back and forth here a little bit. These are very small files in the vast majority of cases. The JPEGs and ping files sometimes can get large, uh, but when we're talking about text files and especially like the XML files and the OPML files, they're small. You know, I've got some files that have a decent amount of data in them. Like, for example, my outline that I'm looking at right now, that file is, what does it say? 873 bytes. It's not even a full kilobyte. Like, this is tiny, 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 tiny. So this stuff is very easy to move around. My notes directory that I use is something that I sync between Linux and Mac machines. And the, the time it takes to sync those is so small, you can barely tell it even happened because those files are so, 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 so tiny, uh, which then lends itself to being faster. And when I say faster, what I'm referring to is when you try to load a file, when you're trying to open it, if you're using these plain text editors, these text editing software applications, it's fast to get these things up and running just because the files are so lightweight and so simple because there's not all the rendering that has to happen on the face of it in order to show all the fancy stuff that comes with it. So they are quite a bit faster. Something we don't really think about, it forces consistency. And what I mean by that is that it's very simply a process of, if, if I have nothing but text and I can't move over to you know, trying to put underlines and different fonts and different colors of text. Like if that's not an option, it, it kind of forces you to be consistent in your syntax. And it'll, it kind of makes it such that you have to stay regular with your methods. Otherwise, I mean, you really can't do anything else. <laughs> Just as an example, um, and actually this goes into the next one here, focus and trying to get rid of distractions. When I was building the keynote for this webinar, because this is a good example of the opposite here, if I had the opportunity, and there are ways to do this, I just do some fancy stuff and it makes it complicated, but if I was able to build my entire slide decks in nothing but text, I wouldn't get lost in trying to change styling and such. So like in this case, what I did was I took some of my webinar formats from Analog Joe. Uh, if you aren't on Team Analog, uh, this webinar is set up and formatted very, very similarly to what we do on AnalogJoe.com. So if that's of any interest to you, I uh, didn't mean to pitch that. But whenever I was building this keynote, it's very easy to get lost in. What do I want on the screen? How am I going to format this? And you throw the fancy camera stuff on it, like what I'm doing, and it starts to get it can get complex very quickly, and you can start to tweak and alter to the nth degree, and that is not what you want in this particular case. So focusing on these very basic file formats, especially with text files, it doesn't allow you to go down that path. It forces you to, to be consistent. That's what I love about it. So it's something I highly, highly, highly recommend um, if you're doing that. Now, Here's a term I've been throwing around lately, anti-proprietary. And in this case, you know what? Here's, here's the thing. I, I'm tired. <laughs> I have been through too many exports and imports. I have been. And I'm guessing there are a lot of you that have as well. So here's a question. Who's tired of lock-in? You're tired of the apps that force you to stick to their ecosystem. Put this in the chat if you're tired of this. If this is something you're sick of and you want to try to deviate away from those systems, if you would like to get away from it, you know, that's, that's a lot of what I am moving towards, that is a lot of what the course that I'm working on is about. And it's something that I'm just exhausted by. I have been working on, I mentioned I've been working on, you know, how do we explore which apps fit some of this structure? The first one I feel like we need to cover is Evernote. 
And the reason I say that is because Evernote is something that I used to use heavily. There are even articles on my website. To this day, they hit top 10 on my site explaining how to use Evernote. It still dumbfounds me. Some days I think I should get back into it. But I'm tired of it. This has led me to this path of anti-proprietary. I don't know if that's a technical term or if I've coined that. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. But I don't want the lock-in. And I get tired of being forced to use their systems. And in some cases, it's okay. Because if there's a feature or a, a function that is not possible on any other system and it's something that's important to you, that lock-in is perfectly fine. You know, I a good example, doing the video editing that I do, I do it in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a pricey set of software when you calculate it all out. But at the same time, I can't use those files for any other system, but I also can't do the things that that software will do elsewhere. At least not in the way I want to do it, not the way I think of it. So it is very difficult to move that, but that's okay. Like, it's okay to choose something proprietary. But I don't need that level of functionality in most cases. So when you get into something like Evernote, if you use something, uh, I believe Bear is this way as, as well, or I think Scrivener is also. If you use any of these systems, Rome Research, anyone? If you use these systems, you're going to be forced to put your data in their system. And if you... <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> if you use their systems, it's not possible to get back out of it. Not easily, anyway. So it's not something that I want to go into because I want to be able to move around. I want that portability. I want... You know, I want all of this stuff. That's what I want in my system. I want to be able to move around. I want it to be easy. I want it lightweight. I want it to not allow me to deviate too far because I want to be able to control it. Okay? Now, there's one other piece here to this um, in that the shareability of this. Now, if you go back to the top one here, all the way up here to the top, the portability aspect, and people laugh at me whenever I share text files with them, but to be honest with you, it makes an awful lot of sense. If I share a text file with someone, I know they can open it. There's notepad and there's text edit, and those are not going anywhere. How many, how many of you have seen the tech guy come in and he's trying to work on something and he pulls up notepad so he can copy paste information into it? I do this all the time. And every IT person I know uses Notepad in some form or another. <laughs> it's, it's just what we do. Because it makes life so much easier to store information temporarily uh, in that particular case. Because it's easy to move it back and forth. Everybody has the option to look at these, uh, to open these particular files. It's not something that's going to force you to lock in. So it gives you a little bit of that freedom uh, to move around. All right. Now, I've been talking a lot about some of these features and why I love, in this case, text files. Um, but I want to mention that they're part of the reason that these things are portable and part of the reason that I really, really love going down this path is just the vast number of apps that you can use for this. And you don't have to stay with it. That's the nice part. Like, I'm going to mention a few apps here. You can use all of them to open the exact same files. You don't have to be locked into their particular system. You're able to move off of these. Okay? Now, first one I'm going to mention here, you're all going to get mad at me for saying this. <laughs> NV Ultra. I have been talking and talking and talking about NV Ultra. If you've watched the live streams, you're on analog, Team Analog at AnalogJoe.com. If you're on any of these, you know that I talk about this tool all the time, and it is still not available. You'll notice in the right-hand corner up at, right above me here, the free trial and buy are crossed out. You can't get this software. Um, I love it. It is what I use daily, and it's something that I'm going to continue using <laughs> and have been collecting thoughts on a working with NV Ultra course even. But 
They got to release it. It's got to get out. They keep saying they're going to have it out by the end of 2020, but I've yet to see it. So I hope they do. Um, if you're not aware, uh, Envy Ultra is the successor to. I keep pointing the wrong way. Um, uh, it's the successor. Sug. Sex. Successor? It's the follow up to Envy Alt. My mouth isn't working today. It's the follow up to Envy Alt, which I used again for a long time. The beauty of Envy Ultra over Envy Alt is that you can use it on multiple directories instead of just one. Envy Alt is stuck to one directory. So it's a bit hard for me to recommend in today's world because there are some other opportunities, um, such as Sublime Text. This is actually one that I've been using quite a bit uh, lately because you can open an entire directory, an entire folder on your computer, and then you can drill down into it as you see the tree there on the left-hand side where it says folders. So it's beautiful for that. So it makes it very easy to create files. You can see there's a lot of .md files there in that directory as well. It's nice. It's technically for developers, but there are a lot of Markdown-based plugins for it. As Michael Porter mentions, you're on it. So it's beautiful in that sense. It gives you a lot of, a lot of flexibility. If you're doing a lot of writing, um, I highly recommend Multi Markdown Composer. It's what I use to do all of my writing, um, and it is what I'm using with my outline currently. It's what I have open to run through that. Because again, it allows you to just open the files and run with it. It doesn't lock you into anything in particular. Um, but there are, like, people don't always realize this, but Ulysses, Ulysses lets you add a local directory or a synced directory to it. You don't have to use their proprietary file format. So in this case, like Ulysses kind of floats this line of allowing you to control your own data and yet allowing some proprietary features on top of it. So it does float that. Now you do lose some of the features if you use your own synced markdown file directory, but I believe it's things like goals and such you can't do uh, because it doesn't have access to the data set for it. So there is that aspect to it as well. So it makes it hard to use all of it, but it does have quite a bit that you can do. So again, if you're not using all the extra features and you're just focusing on those base uh, aspects, it's really not, it's not that big a deal. Uh, the last thing I want to mention here, this is hard to read, but it's because it's way long. Uh, if you go to brettterpster.com and do a search for iText editors, this thing is slick, and he updated it here back in June to July. Um, it is a list of iOS apps and has all of their feature sets. So along the top there, those headings, if you click on them, it will filter it to all the yeses in that column. So it makes it possible for you to find iOS text editor text editor apps that have the features that you want. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's super slick. I'm a big fan. It's something that I continue to go back to from time to time whenever I want to try to find a specific uh, application, and I never really know what I'm looking for. Um, but it is something that I tend to... <laughs> I like. It's a fan. I'm a fan. So... Brett Terpster has a lot of cool stuff if you're into the plain text world. All right, all of that said, I am going to mention a couple things here quickly, and then I'll answer any questions if you have those, because I'm watching time, and I don't want it to get too crazy long here. Um, but I do want to mention real quickly, uh, once more, Working Without Apps. This is a beta testing course right now. And it's something that I'm in the middle of building. I've gotten some good feedback uh, in one particular case uh, on the first video that's already out. So if you're interested in that course, which is going to talk about the exact systems that I used that we've just gone through. Like, this is what the main of that course is covering. So it's covering what is Markdown, how do you get into it, how do I set up my directories, my folders on my computer, and how do I do templated folders, and why do I do that? How do I do that? What are the templates I use for you know, check-ins and note systems? How am, what is in my note system? There's a lot of stuff to it. How does my writing workflow work in this 
uh, process, but the whole point is to teach you how you can get a lot of basic day-to-day -day tasks done without needing all these proprietary systems. You know, a, probably a good example of this is your email. Everybody's familiar with email clients. Like you can move from client to client without losing all your data. That's what this is about. This is about. One of these days I'll learn how to point correctly. That's what this course is about, is showing you how you can do that with things like notes and tasks and such. And yes, it is possible that OmniFocus is on this list. Just saying that. Uh, last thing I'll say here before we do nothing but questions. Again, JoeBulig.live, Monday's 1 p.m. We're going to start covering some of the apps that go into this and apps that don't go into this. We'll see what comes out, see how that turns out, and uh, hopefully it should be good. All right, if you've got a question, type it in below me, underneath here, and uh, I'll do my best to cover it. But uh, I thank you all for joining in today. Uh, looks like all the recording stuff worked out well on my end. So I'll probably use that since it sounds like there's a little bit of audio stuff going on, but I don't know, it looks fine to me, but what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> so hopefully it's at least better than what Demio has been. I was really struggling with some of the recordings and some of what they were doing, so hopefully this works out. So, All right, seeing no questions, let's go ahead and wrap this up because I'm looking at the clock and we're right towards that 30 minute, uh, 30 minute mark. Yeah, the, the uh, um, uh, bandwidth side is always solid for sure, Michael, on the local. And I can get a crazy high file sizes if I do it locally, for sure. Uh, let's see. I got one here from David. Following on from Brett's list of text apps features, are there raw file formats that are better for different types of work? Writing, presenting, websites, etc. I, I don't know that there are. You know, it has to do with you know, what specifically are you after? Honestly, a .txt file goes an awfully long ways. If I'm writing it in Markdown, which actually is like 95% of the time, just because I've used Markdown for so long, I have a tendency to put everything in .md files. I'll use .txt if I'm sharing it with someone, but generally speaking, .md is what the vast majority of my stuff is. But yeah, I don't really use anything different for that. Um, my outline is in a .md file that I'm looking at because it's Markdown. Um, all of my writing from my blog and stuff is all in Markdown. I use Jekyll, so I don't even have to convert it. I just write Markdown in the post, and it's done. So it's pretty slick for that. Uh, I mentioned presentations. When I write them, I do Markdown, then build Keynote, and start from a blank file. Yes. So, for example, the Keynote that we just did that I just used, um, it is only built after I do the outline. So I will outline the content that I want for that presentation. I've been doing a lot of presentations, both for webinars and for in-person classes, which are weird, because there's always a digital element with them as well today. Um, but I always start with a blank markdown file. I use text expander to dump in like an outlined format because I always want to have questions that I'm asking to help us stay connected. Um, and I usually have intro outro stuff that's generally, oh, pardon me, generally similar. So yeah, I generally do start with those as blank files, but I do input them, yes. Do I use open source software for anything? Um, it's a great question, Martin. I'm trying to think what I use because I tend to use open source stuff fairly regularly. I don't know how much I have that's in that's in this territory though. I have a if you're familiar with Nextcloud, I have my own cloud storage software that I use. That's actually how I use, what I use to share files back and forth with Mike for Bookworm. So I'll do my local recordings. I do a little bit of editing on my side, and then I send him the file through my own Nextcloud. But that's an open source deal running on my own server. As far as like plain text files or these raw file formats, I don't think I do. I have a tendency to want somebody else to 
make a little money off their stuff. Like for example, one of my favorite apps right now that you can get <laughs> is Multi Markdown Composer, and that's built by Fletcher Penny, who is currently helping Brett Terpstra build Envy Ultra. So big fan of that one for sure. Uh, the thing I like about Multi Markdown Composer, uh, if you're into that, um, I'm not a mind mapper, but every once in a while I will do that. You can import an OPML file. So you, here you go. If you build a mind map in MindNode or whatever mind mapping software you want to use, export it as OPML, and then drop that OPML file into Multi Markdown Composer. It will immediately give you an outline that you can then rearrange in Composer, and then fill in from there. If you ever want to see that used in mass, again, check out Brett Terpstra. That's what he does. He regularly mind maps things, drops the OPML file into Multi Markdown Composer, and he's off to the races. So, as far as open source software on the plain, like on the raw file formats, I really don't have. Not that I can think of anyway. I might, but I can't place it. <laughs> it's hard for me to know. Honestly, I do a fair amount of editing in Vim on command line, but that's outside the realm of what we need to talk about here. <laughs> I could go a long ways very quickly. Cool, cool. All right, any other questions? I think I got through everything down below. At least my queue is closed at this point. Um, we're a little over 30 minutes. But yes, file uh, the size of this workout, I feel like we've just been moving, moving, moving. So hopefully this doesn't feel like it's too long. I feel like if we were to go for another 30 minutes on this, it would just be too much. So there's that. Cool, cool. Goal is to do a new free webinar once a month, so we'll see how that see how it pans out. All right, thanks team for joining today. I will work on getting this recording up this afternoon. Again, no promises because fires happen, um, but I will do my best to get that up. I appreciate you tuning in today. Again, if you're interested uh, and you want some more free stuff, JoeBulig.live on Monday at 1 p.m. I'm gonna take a look at Evernote. We're going to see how Evernote stacks up against this list of uh, benefits of raw files and uh, see, how it, see how it pans out. All right. Thanks, team. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye, all. To say about this spread, like, it's not a spread. It's just, like, it's, it's stuff everywhere. I just, I just really wanted to do that. <laughs> I've kind of been wanting to do that for a while. <laughs>